Well, I don't like the case. Or I, somebody correct me, this isn't a case. This is like a storage vessel or whatever they said. But this magnetic flappy thing's kind of fun. And then they bang into each other when you take them out. Anyways, AirPods Max, spatial audio. I don't know, on this Cardi B track, it just sounds like really bloated bass and you're in a bathroom or maybe like a subway. Subway bathroom, we'll go with that. It sounds like there's a subwoofer and it's clipping. Skip around a little bit so I get a feel for it. All right, so listen to the same track now with uh, Atmos turned on. Actually readjust the volume a little bit for this. I don't know, it's tough to say because I don't really know this track that well, but I think I actually prefer it without Atmos than with Atmos, even though it's got some cool effects depending on who's talking or who's singing. That sounds a lot better without Atmos. Hmm. The bass is still pretty bad though. I don't know if I'm missing something because it's just, it's not doing it for me. It stays like, you know, like a small sphere, you know. It doesn't like get big like like I was ex as as it might expect from you know what they're talking about, but you could tell it was made for their own headphones. It just sounds like heavy DSP effects. Wow, that sounds weird. That sounds pretty good on this Logic album. The Atmos actually sounds what I would assume to be superior from without Atmos. It's pretty cool actually. It's a good effect on this track. It's almost almost like going way more 3D. The narrator at the beginning of this track is uh, pretty cool. He's kind of like floating in my head and on the top. It's got some more space for sure. They jump around a little bit. The singer is a bit more in the background now instead of a bit forward, so it's a little back further, which actually kind of sounds better to me. Can you disable Atmos and try it without? Okay, so that was with Atmos on, and it sounded a lot more coherent than the other tracks I was listening to, but I'm still not really sure I prefer Atmos gives it a little bit more of a space i guess it's on the 1266 and i will try with the 1266 yeah this is cool on the 1266 the the uh, narrator at the beginning of the track sounds like there so we're gonna listen turn atmos on and play the same logic track again we'll try atmos on and we'll see what happens well that's different jeez that's absolutely nothing like on the airpods max there's a huge sense of like space an environment with this track. With the AirPods Max, you hear nothing but the limitations of the device. You hear the issues with the DSP and the, the limitations of the chassis. Uh, you don't feel the space that I think they're trying to convey. And with 1266, you absolutely do. You feel the space all day. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily prefer Atmos still. It's, it's a different experience. Uh, on this track, it's a very different presentation, but it still sounds very processed. Oh man, this is really like live. You can hear this, you can completely hear the space that the, the narrator's talking in. You can hear the boundaries of it. Pretty much just the microphone. Yeah, same with the vocals. Now you're just, you're, you could just hear the space the guy's in. Well, there's no doubt there's an effect on <laughs> I could say that. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a like, um, concert hall or something on like a receiver. That's what I'd say. Something like that. Uh, I don't think I would use it, though. <laughs> you know? So we all independently listened to Atmos on AirPods Max, and we also heard it on 1266. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have no experience with this before, other than the various spatial effects that people added in the industry over the years, but they didn't call it Dolby Atmos, of course. Yeah, I never played with this with two-channel either. The interesting thing was, for me at least, this sounded exactly like what I expected. It sounded like the tools that were already available for, what, 10, 20 years now. It had the same feeling to me as the stuff that you could turn on on your computer in, in random uh, programs or the little boxes that had these little features built into it. It made some things interesting, some aspects maybe spacey, but it screwed everything else up. So yeah, it depends. Well, yeah, I it, guess it's, it's just strange like we're still there. The way Apple brands it, it seems like it's this just an amazing thing well, that makes everything better. I think it's track dependent. Well, yeah, and uh, because Highly I, dependent. I didn't listen, to, I only listened to two tracks on the same album. But you know, how about you? You listen to? I only listened to the, the two first tracks. one. Uh, Your two, yeah, and then one pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I listened to three or four albums, and two of them sounded horrifically appalling on all the headphones. Yeah, and the other one sounded okay kind of but screwed some things yeah, up. Yeah, I did try one of the other. And one I've, more oh. eh, kind of in the middle. I did try one of the other albums. I don't like the sound of it either. So it's just, all over. I yeah. went to the I went to the Logic. That, that was the yeah. that was that was a the nice Logic clean album recording. was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And at most it sounded okay. I don't know if I prefer it. It depends on the headphones. Well, what what did you find out on track 1? Like what went out? Well, it kind of seemed like uh like in like 
3D movies where they're like intentionally trying to make stuff, you know, look 3D. Yeah, yeah it's exactly it's like, like that. You know, you want to make it pop more, you know, but in audio. So I thought it didn't sound natural, right? The effects right. sounded like they were added on after the fact, like they were an oversight. Yeah. And to well, me, think, that was really disturbing. I it think wasn't what, what it seemed to do is cohesive. it brought out with Atmos on, at least on track one, it brought out more of a sense of space in well, the yeah. recording for sure. Yeah. Which I mean, is a is a nice effect. Yeah. You know, but on 1266 though, it was really cool. Like, did you notice it? What it did? Like you could really hear into the space that was yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, it sounded there. like there was no barrier there. Yeah. yeah. That's the strange thing. So on the AirPods, you kind of needed the sense of space there. The space that Atmos added on the Logic Track was actually kind of nice. It was pleasant because on the standard two channel master, you don't really have a whole lot of that. There's very little sense of space. Well, the vocals were a bit more forward yeah. on the without the Atmos. And then the Atmos yeah, it pushes he dropped everything back. Like everything went back and got more which probably you need, like, adds more to volume the space. Too, then, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. I had to turn it up, me yeah. too. Yeah. And it was uh, just more spatial effect, which I guess was kind of cool. I don't think it was overdone. Like I've seen like in the past, you know, Dolby always had certain things where you throw it on with whatever effects. And it, Dolby's more of an aftermarket effect, so to speak, compared to Atmos, right? Because it's not mastered. It's not, it's not, not mastered master to be for that. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just an effect yeah. that probably takes phase and so on and whatever it does. Who the hell knows? And all the various versions of it over the years. But uh, the Atmos, I guess, we're being told. I didn't realize until today that the, the, these songs are actually mixed for Atmos. Mm -hmm. There's an actual plug-in. It occurs in the mastering process well, that they used to. Especially with the AirPods, you can definitely tell that's that's the case. Like, it sounds like it was made yeah. to be played on this. Yeah, and I didn't know that before I listened to it. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. I could just, so like, I'm, I, you can really hear the space that the guy's talking in or singing mm -hmm. in. You know, you, you can pick up on the mic and he, you can tell yeah, it he's separates in, everything. More. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah which I mean. Huge separation. Yeah, which could be, I mean, a good thing and a bad thing. You yeah. know, cause people are used to hearing it all congealed yeah. into one thing. It's so different. Now, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it makes the recording side of it more difficult, I think. Well, yeah, probably. You know, because yeah. now you you really got to pay attention to detail. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that many people are going to put a huge amount of effort into the Atmos mixing, at least right now. So we'll have to see what the future holds, because right now it's super inconsistent. There's big differences from album to album, and some sound just bad. Yeah. Others sound kind of cool. So, you saying they sound know. bad with the Atmos ad? With the Atmos on, yeah. Oh. It's just like they didn't put any time into it. They just yeah, slapped listen, something together. I didn't listen enough to find yeah, them. Yeah, some sound pretty bad. But I, I did listen to on um, my, uh, my uh, AirPods Pro yeah. with some of it. And yeah, the, the tracks, I, I've listened to more. And yeah, it's all over the place. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So it's going to take a little bit of time for them to walk to... For yeah, this we'll to wash see. through and yeah. yeah. Well, you could see, you could tell though. There's got to be a learning curve. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm. I was. I'm being told that Atmos as a plugin in the mixing and mastering stage is kind of new for uh, uh, music. Right. It's mm -hmm. a. It's commonplace. Been around a long time for movies. So those guys got it down in terms of how to, you know, set set up the tracks for it. But in music, I guess it's not so popular yet. So there's going to be a hell of a learning curve there for all the mixing and mastering engineers to, to, to learn how to deal with this and, you know, and, 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 and hear what they're laying down in this different format. And, it, and the question is, do any of them really care? <laughs> well, I guess we'll you know, it's out. a lot of work. It's more work. There's no question. Right, it's right. more workflow if you've got to deal with two different outcomes of the same track on top of, I don't know how many more, that, correction, another outcome on the same track compared to, I don't know how many they do now. You know, I don't know if they'd make different, different cuts for the, the albums or, or for versus the MP3 files versus the. <laughs> it's likely. I'm know. sure it depends on you know, who's doing it. But yeah, there's it probably several a, versions. It gets to a point, but how many of these things can you juggle? Yeah. You know, well, yeah. How, many how much effort do you want to put in? Right. Yeah. Well, and the expense. Well, you have a huge audience now of people that can listen to it in that's a new actually way. That's true. You know, so. That's going to drive it. So we'll yeah. see if that makes a difference. Yeah. Because right now it's really inconsistent. Yeah. Well, the other thing I noticed is with with the 1266 with atmos on if you notice you could really hear what it was doing oh yeah like it you didn't really know you, you knew there was like something going on with the uh, airpods but right. when you go to 1266 it so sounded yeah. like things were being processed oh, yeah. you could hear yeah. all the effects <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they're all clearly you could hear yeah. every separate oh you could thing pick out on. the freaking microphone yeah you like, know to to a big extent it's surprising how yeah. profound that was because i think you could take somebody off the street and in a few minutes, if they have no experience whatsoever with high-end headphones, they would readily be able to tell, oh, yeah, I, 
I hear what you're talking about. Right. I, could, I could really tell oh, yeah. Yeah. that this headphone is showing you something different than this other headphone. Which Especially is, coming which right is strange. from the AirPods. Go, switch, I mean, that's an unusual yeah, true. back to back. Yeah, usually we're comparison. just kind of wearing our own stuff. But yeah, when you yeah. go like literally right into it, it's like, oh, my, this is a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. Sounds yeah. completely different. Yeah, it was pretty cool, actually. I mean, it, the track sounded okay without Atmos, fine without Atmos yeah. on the 1266, you know, the, the, the first track. But yeah. Um, but yeah, when you added Atmos, it's like, wow, this is really different. You yeah, know, it's, it's like, quite different. Yeah, I, I could get used to that. That's the thing. You know? I'm not used but, to it, so right now I don't want it. Yeah, I think I, I could think get used to it if it was done well. I was on the fence yeah. too. Yeah, I'm like, well, I, I'm almost thinking I like it without it on the 1266 yeah. because it might yeah. be too much. Yeah. But see, I could get that because whatever these guys are using when they're creating the Atmos layer, whatever they're using to listen to on isn't a 1266. Well, yeah. So they're like, you know, they're not hearing it to the level. They're not hearing their processing to the level that we are, yeah. you know. So, but the cool thing is, is all that info is available with this higher res format. It's clear, it's clean, yeah, it's there, and it's yeah. obvious. Where I think normally it would just get squished in the compression algorithm. That's true. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't. The space would be gone to begin with. So, adding a little bit would be kind of cool, but nowhere to this extent. It's raised the, you know, the ceiling, so to speak, on what's what's. Well, possible. You could run your existing headphones with Atmos now if you want. If you have wired headphones, as long as you have uh, supported hardware, yeah. you could tack it on. So that's pretty cool. So this is available to pretty much everybody. And the thing I found most shocking is simply that on the AirPods Max, which you would think that's more or less what this was made for, uh, I never preferred Atmos on. But on 1266, at least on the Logic album, it was kind of cool with it on. It sounded... It was very neat. I wouldn't say it sounded better, but it was very interesting. Yeah. See, I was distracted, though, by it. it. It's weird. It, it yeah. changes yeah. The, the acoustic perspective of what's going on yes. between the singer and the environment that they're trying to portray, because it was pretty obvious that the singer and the narrator were at two different microphones, two different spaces, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I think... Or, or, I th they, or they completely just made the effects because it's totally different for each well, one. Well, yeah, I think that the problem was being like a back-to-back -back test was the problem. If yeah. I was just listening to music, maybe I didn't, but I was, it was like listening for Atmos. Right. So I think I was paying attention too much to the effects that were happening. Uh, and that's why I didn't really like it as much because right. I'm, I'm like, I see what it's doing. Yeah. Do I like what it's doing? Yeah. You know? I was just listening. If more you were to, just listening, it might be different. I was listening more to the imaging, the sound yeah. stage that was throwing and seeing mm -hmm. how it was changing it. Yeah. And how Atmos kind of stepped things back a bit well, further yeah. away perspective. The vocals clearly you know? is the biggest change. Yeah. yeah it pushes right. everything back. But it kind of kind of changed. The, the vocals are like kind of like smeared a little bit slightly. Yeah. It's not as crisp. It sounded like they murdered the available dynamic range because basically maybe whatever you had available to you will say it was extended slightly. But if now you're adding space in between things, you have to kind of sort of compress the actual key elements. You know, your vocals kind of almost feel squished compared to where they were in the two-channel track. Or the two-channel track, everything sounded smooth and immersive. Like, like even. Yeah. yeah, it sounded coherent. Well, that's yeah. the thing, because now, you know, yeah. that's the problem. That's the double-edged sword with resolution. You get to a point where the, res the resolution of playback gets so high that you do, that coherency is a very difficult thing to portray. It's not the mix, the, 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 the mixing and mastering have to be so good because otherwise you're just picking out differences in mic arrangements and acoustics of where each mic is right yeah. you're, you're starting to hear that individual space for each mic yeah you know and they're usually not in the same room unless it's yeah. a live recording mm -hmm. so you know so now that that's what you get to you reach a point where and we've we do this with our yeah, r&d and the headphones right? we we've we we hear this all the time on all the tracks on the you know it's just more apparent here. Yeah. <laughs> Very apparent. It does highlight it. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think, an issue because the flaws in bad recording seem to be more pronounced with Atmos on. When something isn't done right, it seems to be more noticeable. So it depends on the person, but I don't find that enjoyable. I mean, it's kind of like watching a 1080p video on 8K TV. It just doesn't look as good as the 4K videos. Anymore. Yeah, kind of, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like... To some extent. I mean, the, the 1080 videos are congealed and they're all, you know, it's all smooth because there's just not a lot of detail there. And so you don't see the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now you throw a freaking spotlight on it and throw a magnifying lens on it. And it's like, whoa. Well, I guess <laughs> I it's like know. listening to old like 50s and 60s recordings. And yeah. Yeah. Now with modern equipment, yeah, you can... You, yeah, with that stuff, pick, man. Pick you, out random you really hear the, the tubes and yeah. the hum. And, 
Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's difficult. Sometimes they get it right, and old recordings that don't have a lot of resolution and detail could actually sound great on high-end gear, but it's tough, and a lot of them, unfortunately, don't. Well, I guess, is anybody going to be remastering old stuff? <laughs> you know, yeah, for with Atmos. Ford, yeah, Atmos. Yeah, I, I don't know it. about that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. You never know. Some of the popular stuff, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what Elvis would sound like on Atmos. Do they have any? I don't even know. <laughs> I didn't look. I don't know. Is there any old stuff? Beatles? Oh, yeah, that Beatles. sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. See, they, 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 that's been overdone. They've been redoing yeah, There's like 300 there's, remasters there's, of Beatles. There's 100 spatial effects with the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, we're in the, the same boat as we were with the uh, high res, and that this is just going to take a little bit of time to Yeah. To mature. This, I think, is... This more than the high res. Side, very much yeah. less positive for the industry as a whole. For um, music. Yeah, I don't think, in terms of like the, the absolute music industry from the consumer's perspective, this is going to do a whole lot, but... I could be wrong, and it could be the most amazing thing ever. Just right look. now, I don't feel it, though. So overall, it did, unfortunately, less than I had hoped, and it doesn't seem to be that exciting. Yeah, not I yet. hope things improve, because it can be cool. There's no doubt. There's a couple albums that had some interesting effects, but right now, it's, it's in the early days, and it isn't really superior. It's just a different way to listen. Well, my hope was to be able to use this for movies. Yeah, you know, that's what I really wanted to use it for. Mm. So that's the ticket. I think that's where we're going with this one, you mm. know, more than the music. But it'd be cool to see some more and more, um, you know, uh, recording artists who are really into their shit uh, do an Atmos Lawyer too. And, yeah. You know, maybe really people will it. focus on building it in as part of the design when they're mixing and mastering. Because right now it seems probably more like an afterthought for these people. It's just they figured. Well, it's available. This is a tool. We'll give it a shot. But I don't think they really determined that this is something we want to make available on Atmos. That's going to take time. Yeah, so I mean, we'll comes, see. I mean, it's only been like a week. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, Not really. Early days. Yeah. yeah. So we got plenty of time for this. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. They'll mm -hmm. figure it out for us. And we're going to kick back and relax and listen to this. Yeah, yep. there you go. It's going to be awesome. So thank you, everybody, for watching our blabber on this one. And uh, it was fun experimenting with this for the first time and seeing what it's doing and trying to convey to you what we heard. Um, please subscribe to us. Um, thumbs us up if you like this video. And uh, stop back again. Take care. <laughs>